Looking for Eagles. He wasn't expecting it, and Di Domenico will take charge. Ahead for Bergen. Down the right side. Here comes Bergen chipping it in front. Di Domenico redirected as he was being hooked from behind. There'll be a Moncton penalty as Morehouse takes exception for the Sea Dog player in deep. A now helmetless Sea Dog player. Steve Bellafleur, Morehouse is really upset. Now the oh, Lightning are going to let them go. Oh! And Bellafleur is saying, hey, I thought you were holding him back, and he just took one in the chops. Morehouse was anxious to go, and the linesman eventually relented. That didn't work out so well for Steve Bellafleur. No, absolutely not. We're going to have to give that all. Oh, Bellafleur is still holding on to Morehouse's jersey. Morehouse saying, you took the shots, buddy. A hit to the box. Morehouse better be careful. He could end up with some extra time here in the sin bin if he's not careful. We're, we're going to see the... But it finds its way ahead and onto the stick of Jason Lepage, who hustles down the left wing. Lepage in the corner. Ooh. And there's a Sea Dog down, prone on the ice, and there's going to be a fight as David Stitch just attacks Jason Lepage as the Sea Dog. I believe that's Goche who's down and in a heap. Goche went in, assuming that it is Goche, and do a quick scan of the bench. No, it's not Goche. No. Here comes the hit. We're going to see the replay. A lot of people here at the rink, I don't think, even saw it because the puck moves so quickly. Here it comes. Digging Pascal in for it. Amiot. Oh, oh it he, the stick that came around and caught him in the face. He took the stick, and it looked like a pretty innocent play. Certainly didn't look like it was an intent. He just, oh, he put the stick up. The Z Dog player. Here we're going to see it again. He went in to get in after the puck. Sparling just took the brunt of the stick. Amiot, I believe. Is it Amiot down there? Okay, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. Joe and Pelche have been winning the battles. Here's John Scott in his own end for the Arrows. Rockford getting a change behind the play. Now we've got a fight away from action. Bertram and Mitz Love. They square off. Love came with a couple of big rights. Not happy about that high hit he took. Love, couple of rights. Bertram left. Down to the ice goes Bertram. Kept the right by Love. They were throwing them bombs away. And Mitz Love with his 25th fight of the year. Trying to get a little payback for that shot by Tim Brent earlier in this frame. Good job firing up this crowd by Mitch Love. Dan Bertram, Boston College national champion. He's a second round pick of the Chicago Blackhawks. You know, a guy who only has 51 penalty minutes. Very good player. He's a plus four. Four goals, four assists, eight points so far. But you know what? He answered the bell and went with a very tough guy in Mitch Love. But Mitch Love firing up this club. Under nine to go in the third. Again, we step aside. The Ice Sox lead the Arrows 3-1 on Fox Sports Houston. On the D for the Wolves. Carroll couldn't control, and it's Kurtz. John Kurtz clears it in and then chases after it. We've got something going very quickly as Michael Latta is set to go and mixing it up with Daniel Maggio. Well, you saw this one starting to take place. The puck moved down towards the Guelph end and once they got into the neutral zone, both Latta and Maggio figured they'd try and get things started off in the right foot for their respective teams. Guelph obviously looking for a little jump at home and Sudbury with a lot of jump here to start this game playing three and less than three. Well, Maggio still wants more, but the linesmen are going to step in here. As he was the recipient of a couple lot of shots that sent Maggio to the ice. Both guys will go to the box and, well, welcome to the hockey game. So they lose a D-man, and the other side loses a forward. There's Chris Height, who has been given the job. Jason Brooks. Jason, first goal in the second period, and Banks 24th of the year. And another fight going on. Lotta, this time, is mixing it up with Kurtz. Kurtz loses an edge. And then Kurtz is trying to give his team a little jump here, but uh, down four here. 25-16 left. Chuck shatters his stick. Lose puck, Tresham tries to just... 
jumped it towards the net. Dragged down. It could have been a call on it. The referees opted no call. And now we've got Sefton wailing on a storm player. It looks like Connor Tresham is in the middle of it. Yeah, the two got tied up, and I think Tresham thought there should have been a call on him. And Sefton and Tresham went up the ice, and it wasn't long before the gloves came off. So these couple of young guys to let him fly. 8 to the score. Guelph leading Sutton. Off Daniel Catanacci. Speaking of Wilson, he'll be our second period intermission guest. Midpoint of the Plymouth line, it's Bo Schmitz playing it ahead with a minute left. And the Hounds offside at the Plymouth line, pushing and shoving Levi. And now we're going to get Levi and Carrick. Well, here, here are two boys that aren't afraid to drop. Levi's going to get it going early, and he tackles Carrick. Carrick has a bit of a history against the Whalers. But he is an agitator to everybody around the league. If he's on your team, Sean. I think you like him. Well, he's the one that decided he wanted to drop first. They were they were mixing it up quite a bit, shoving each other, and then I saw Carrick drop his gloves, and Austin said okay, and then he went and filled them up pretty good. Time of the scrap will be a 19.02. Two. Sue lead after two. We're going to be talking with Tom Wilson, the second round draft pick of the Whalers. I believe Tom is ready to go. Tom, can you hear us? Yep. Tom, what'd you think of that nice turnaround for the Whalers? Uh, what, what, uh, what do you think got it going? A great play by Zarnik that seemed to energize everybody. Would you say? Oh yeah, no, that was a great goal by Zarnik. We were shorthanded. It's really exactly what we needed in this type of game. We're uh, down a goal now, and we just got to do whatever it takes to get that third goal and. Uh, finish him off here. And the second goal was just uh, three guys crashing the net with a good play by James Livingston. And that's how you score goals. I mean, you know that, right? Oh, yeah. In any type of game, you go to the net hard, and there's a good shot on that. There's a good chance that you'll get a puck right on your tape for the goal. I and, really uh, heard you did a great job there and uh, finished it home. I really like uh, how you play and how you've adjusted so far to the OHL. How's it been for you? How do you like playing at this level? Oh, it's really been fun. You know, a challenge coming to the rink every day, whether practice or game. And I just like to go out there and hammer people and play my game and do my role for the team, and that's uh, that's what I seem to do so far, so I just want to keep it up. One thing I liked about you, Tom, you got the suspension early in the year. You didn't complain. You kept working hard. You kept your nose clean, and you're back in the lineup helping us out, and uh, no whining over that suspension. Uh, uh, good attitude on your part. Where does that come from? I know uh, 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 it's a great group of guys to work with, but you seem to have a great attitude. Where does that come from? Yeah, you know, it's always tough when you come in come into the league like that and get a, a five-game suspension like that, but it's a, it's a part of the game. Uh, it's unfortunate, but, hey, I'm moving on and uh, hoping to help the team when I get in the lineup, and yeah. Let me just say for the record, I want the guy on my team who says he likes to hammer people. <laughs> Tom, uh, Tom, no, I, all kidding aside, you know, there's a, there's a statement around here that's been floating around these parts for a while, and it's the Whaler way, and that's working hard and going out there and hammering people it just seems like you fit hand in glove here yeah you know coming up i always heard that it's a uh, whaler hockey here and that just means dumping her in and crashing and banging and uh that's exactly my type of style and uh it seems to fit in here now tom I, I have to tease you a little bit tell me about your first goal in the ohl it wasn't exactly the kind of goal you, you get by crashing and banging oh. but you actually made a pretty good defensive play <laughs> yeah, the uh, it, it was a funny one, the empty netter, and all the guys are giving me a hard time about it, but it's just fun, and uh, hey, I'll take any uh, them any way I can, and uh, they're joking around, saying they'll put me out in those situations where they need a nice, long, sh precise shot and stuff like that, but hey, I'll take it and uh, move on and hopefully get a few more by the end of the season. You certainly will. That was your, uh, that was your uh, I, I guess you could say, your mode of operation growing up. Uh, you were always a pretty fair scorer growing up, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct, but uh, everything changes when you come to the OHL. Obviously, it's a harder league to play in, and the, gum, the goals are hard to come by. So uh, any goal is great, whether it's going in, the, going in and getting a hard or sniping one or even putting in the empty net, they all count. So that's what I'm trying to do, and uh, Zarnik and those guys show me how to do it by putting those pretty ones in. So I just want to watch and learn in my first year here. Perfect. Uh, one last thing, we'll let you go. What do the Whalers have to do in the third period to turn this thing around even more? 
Like what, like I said before, whatever it takes. Vluch comes into the room and tells us that we need to do whatever it takes. Block shots, dump her in. This goalie's had a tough time so far. We just need to put it on net, go to that net, and try and score another ugly one. Or if it's pretty, we'll take it. Tom Wilson, nice talking to you. We'll definitely do it again. Keep up the good work. All right, thanks, guys. Perfect. Tom Wilson, you wouldn't know this guy is uh, 16 years old, eh? I love him. I, I, that's it. I I love the way he plays. I mean, when a guy comes out and says, I like to hammer people, are you kidding me? How many kids are going to say that? Of course, you should say it. Come out and admit it and everything. Hey, you know what? In regards to his first goal, he can tell the rookies in here two years from now that it was the most beautiful goal this building ever has seen. You know, that's the beauty of this league. But he, he's right. You know what? He's got a great attitude, too, Pete. You know, for I, I think you hit the nail right on top of the head. For a kid that's 16, to, to say those things and feel those way and handle himself the way he did, uh, props to him. He's uh, doing well in the Chicago Wolves uniform. Cypher's on the puck right now as he has to get away from Rose Hill in the corner. Falls, went to bat it away. Mitchell knocks it down out of the air. Then Cyphers hits Mitchell from behind. He'll go to the box. And now gets right back up and gives Mitchell a shot. In comes Rose Hill. DeVoe takes a swipe at Keith Ollie. Ollie now back at DeVoe in the corner. And the two of them might even drop the gloves here. And DeVoe does drop the gloves with Keith Ollie. Ollie now trying to get his glove off and swing back. And now he does behind the net. These are two big boys here. Keith Ollie and Andre DeVoe both well past the six foot marker. Ollie now gets DeVoe's helmet, helmet off. But there DeVoe we go. Right. He's got the Ollie reach too. Right. Ollie six six, Devoe six five. Both a couple of big boys. And Keith Ollie, I like this out of him that he's getting physical big time here in this game. Ollie back with a right. Devoe with a right of his own. And then they both just stop as the linesman get in between. <laughs> well, that was an unusual way to end it. And okay, we're done. Well, this whole situation starts with Jamie Cyphers in the corner and. It's going to be uh, Mitchell who picks up that loose puck, ciphers with that push from behind, and he takes exception to Mitchell going down and gives him an extra shot right there. But, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Ollie and DeVoe start mixing it up before they get to that situation right there. And then a little face wash by Ollie, and it's DeVoe gets the gloves off first as he starts swinging away, and Ollie knows he doesn't want to hit that shield. And a good job by the youngster Keith Ollie is showing that physical presence that he, you know, everybody talks about. He's the big man, good defensive defenseman, but like to see him play a little more physical. And he's certainly done that here in his couple of games back in the American Hockey League since being returned by the Toronto Maple Leafs. coming from Norfolk, 275 penalty minutes that one season. Now your penalty minutes are down, your offense is up, and you've turned into a skater body checker. How long has this process been going on for you as a hockey player? Um, I don't think it ever really stopped. You know, I, I mean, I started off playing professional as a, as a D-man, and then when I switched to forward, it was just kind of a spur-of-the-moment thing, and I, I kind of ended up uh, fighting a lot. And I, you know, I had some coaches that didn't didn't give me a lot of ice time or opportunity. And since I've been coming to Toronto here and, and getting more opportunity and having the coaches that have, have tried to develop me, it's uh, it's been going well. It's a good balance, isn't it? Now, I mean, uh, you were known as a fighter, but now you've turned into a, a balanced hockey player, and this looks like a pretty good card to the National Hockey League because teams are looking for players like yourself. Yeah, I think so. You know, I've always thought I had more more to uh, offer than just the fighting part. And now, you know, they're telling me not to go out there looking for the fight and to, to do other things. And I think that if I do those well, then, you know, the fights may come to me, and that's fine too. But uh, it's nice to have uh, other parts of the game to focus on. Ron and uh, Dallas have both called on high energy, energy from you. You've delivered in that regard. Uh, how important is your ability as a skater in terms of developing that and getting it on the forecheck? Yeah, it's definitely important. You know, uh, you know, you got to have your legs moving, and, and in order to get on the on the forecheck and, and finish those checks and track those guys down, especially in the NHL, it's uh, you got to have your skating going. And I've I've worked with Graham Townsend and uh, and worked in practice and things like that. And I think my skating skating's gotten better every year, and uh, hopefully it continues. Tell me about the magic with you, Daryl Boyce, and uh, Greg Scott, who's hurt right now. But uh, the three of you really had it going. Probably the Marley's best line. Yeah, it was nice. Um, you know, we were kind of starting every game, every period, and, and matching against uh, their top line, and at the same time getting chances ourselves. So, 
it was really nice to have a line there that we could uh, work with, and I, you know, we had confidence every game. I knew that they were, you know, there beside me, and, and vice versa to uh, to lean on. And we seems like we uh, we had a lot of good games together and some chemistry, which was nice to find. Some great Alberta people on this Toronto Maple Leaf team. Now you're the latest addition. Tell us about Olds Alberta, where it is, and what life was like for you growing up as a young man. Uh, Olds, uh, it's about seven thousand people, I think. Now it's just uh, just an hour north of Calgary, and. It's a nice town. Uh, I plan on uh, on spending my days there when I'm done playing hockey and and raising a family there. It's a uh, it's a good community, you know. Uh, I grew up there, raised on a ranch, and, and kind of had a a cattle cattle family. Had the cattle and the horses growing up, and and the family was auctioneers, and my brother's into that now. So it's uh, it was nice to grow up there, and uh, you know I miss it, and it's uh, it's always good to go back there. Talked about the evolution as a hockey player. Now, away from the ice, I understand you're engaged and uh, heading in a different direction there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, I've uh, had a girlfriend for both.